Welcome to my treatment room and this is um, a celebratory video to mark the uh, wonderful new website and my blog. And I thought I would have as my subject how you might use tools occasionally in Shiatsu. Well, if you're practicing Zen Shiatsu, really nothing beats the human hand, elbow, knee, foot, chin. You use your body. But if you do any kind, there are many kinds of Shiatsu in the world. And if you do a kind of Shiatsu that um, involves um, TCM concepts such as dampness or stagnation, or if you want to use points and you want to use them on a regular basis and you want to really make sure that they are effective, then sometimes tools can be very helpful. And uh, this tool is one specific to Shiatsu practice. It was it's called a manaka hammer and peg. And um, Dr. Manaka was one of the great Japanese physicians and um, did shiatsu, um, but in, obviously developed it in his own very, very specialised way. By the end, he was largely concentrating on the hara and dampuku, but uh, he developed the use of this hammer and peg for certain points. Um, I'm also going to demonstrate with another tool in a, in a moment. So, uh, I have a condition at the moment that I've been using the Manaka Hammer for and it's a condition of um, pain uh, radiating down from my left hip to my left knee and just further down, mostly along the gallbladder channel, a little bit along the stomach or um, if you do Zen Shiatsu extensions also focused really on the Nasunaga triple heater and um, I've diagnosed myself as having a condition of dampness because it's got worse with damp, damp weather makes it worse, dry, not, dry weather makes it better but also um, diagnosing conditions in TCM you really need to be able to see the tongue and my tongue is big and fat with a white coating which is worse on the left side and that indicates that there's more dampness, the tongue is swollen which indicates damp phlegm and there's more dampness on the left side so it shows on my tongue so I know that. I'm going to show you a photo of my tongue here. So, so dampness is a condition, it's lodged in the muscles, it's lodged in my meridians, it's chosen the left hand side because my left hand side tends to be a bit weaker and so it was easier for it to get in and now it really doesn't want to get out. And that's the sort of condition that you would use the, um, the tool for, is in conditions of stagnation or some exterior thing that is lodged in there and doesn't want to leave. So, so how I use it is that I find roughly the area where it is painful, so prodding around with the peg for a bit and this area feels quite relevant. So, so I'll hit a bit, nothing much, yes, that's a good point, that feels significant and good heavens, this is stomach 31. A very very good point for movement of leg. So let's try some more points. Let's try gallbladder 31. That's not as painful as it was when I did it before. Not as significant as it was when I did it before. Let's go down to um, gallbladder 34. No, I 
think I've nearly cured myself. It's all a lot better. But I'll carry on showing you how you can use it. So you can select points like I just did, or you can choose the painful meridian or the stagnant meridian, and you can work all the way down it like this. And of course, I'm showing you on myself. I don't have anybody handy to show you on at the moment. Nobody who I would want to hit with a hammer. Bear in mind that this is a very dispersing technique. This is something you use to shift things, to move things, to stir things up. If you've got somebody very frail and deficient, don't use it. Don't just use it blindly for any kind of pain because it's very specific. Here I am moving dampness out of my muscle of a triple heater meridian. And then I'll do it out of my broad line meridian. Ooh, that's quite painful there. And so on. And so it's not just the painful points, I can also use points for specific for dampness, like spleen nine. Or I can use stomach 36. You get a really good strong sensation with this and it really feels like it moves things around quite a lot. So the Manaka hammer and peg and you can find it um, from acupuncture suppliers and there's also uh, you, uh, a video on YouTube couple of videos where you can see it being used in different ways for example used on children etc but I thought I'd like to show you that and recommend it it's really very useful in certain circumstances so here's another tool that I bought some time ago and do you know I've looked everywhere to find another one so that I could tell you where to get it and I can't find one it seems to be unique and um, so really I'm so sorry to show you this, but it's very useful because it's got this sort of ball bearing at the top, which means that it slides very easily over the skin. However, as you can't get it now, you can use other tools that you can buy on the internet quite readily, and some of them are called Thai massage tools, etc. And most of them are simply things like wooden pegs, not unlike the Manaka peg that I just showed you. but I've um, experimented with this and I can quite well use the other end of it. And I, I use it for very specific purposes. And I use it particularly between the metatarsals of the foot down to the webs between the toes. And um, these are dredging or draining points on the webs between the toes. And this is very much a, a draining technique. So quite suitable when I've done something like moving stagnation. Once again, remember, you can do this with your hands. You don't need to do it with a tool. But it's, as I've got older and my hands are weaker and my thumbs are more arthritic, I do find these tools are quite useful sometimes. You know, when I've done a whole shiatsu and I think, oh, I really should do a bit of dredging on that foot. And I think, yes, reach for the tool. So this is how it goes. So just, you could oil the foot if you wanted, but usually you can just slide along between the metatarsals, sliding along like that. I do apologize for my terrible old feet, but you can see much better if I'm not wearing socks. So really with intention, just scooping away all the bad key that's come out of the leg. All the dampness and stagnation, just getting it out from where it might be lurking in the meridians of the foot. Quite interesting, as I'm doing this, um, I am actually feeling quite a strong response in my um, 
in this area here, quite strong prickling feeling there. So it's obviously having some effect on that area. Could we say maybe stomach or triple heater diagnostic area? Or perhaps a gallbladder point. So and it's particularly strong that prickling feeling when I'm working here, which is indeed gallbladder meridian. You can also use whatever tool you're using to nestle in between the toes and rotate around so you'll get quite a strong stimulation of that point. So there we are, very simple way. Um, I found that my receivers quite like it and uh, what would you use it for? Well I leave it up to you really, it's not going to do any harm to anybody this one. Unlike the other technique with the hammer and peg on the meridians, which might be a little bit strong for some people, this one seems to be quite acceptable to most people and um, feels good and everybody can do with a bit of dredging, so I recommend.